In this video, we're going to talk about the vitamin D pathway and the deficiency. And I've seen this question come up throughout QBanks and such. So if you know the pathway and you know exactly kind of like we'll, we'll learn kind of where in the body these, this occurs, whether it's a skin, liver, or kidney, we'll, we'll know the, um, the enzymes kind of the, in the rate limiting step. And also I want you to know which one is an isomerization versus a hydroxylation. So we'll cover all that and hope you like the video. All right, guys, so here's the, uh, the questions for the vitamin D. It says, a 26-year-old female who was involved in a severe motor vehicle accident and currently on day 200 of a prolonged hospitalization is now able to engage in physical therapy. She is, uh, she is now walking with an assistive device. Routine lab work reveals uh, vitamin D levels at 29, uh, and here's the normal range. Uh, the attending physician recommends periodic light exposure in the atrium area. Based upon this recommendation, which of the following is most associated with this type of recommendation for her vitamin D levels? Now we have to know the pathway, okay? And this is just one we, we typically just have to, have to memorize, but it's not too bad, okay? We start out, and I'm just gonna write it out real fast here. d 7 d cholesterol, okay? And that's gonna go to our chole, um, calciferol. Okay, and that takes us to our 25, right? Our 25 hydrocholecalciferol. All right, just anyways, 25 OH, okay? And then from here, I want you to break it down into active and inactive, and that's very important, okay? And then, of course, the active is gonna go to the uh, 125 dihydrocholecalciferol, blah, 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 blah. And then this one's going to go to 2425, you know, again, dihydrocholecalciferol. You know, we don't really care so much about that name right now. So here's the pathway. It goes from 7 to cholecalciferol to 25, and then 1 and a 24, okay? Now, what we have to memorize on this, what we have to understand is, where first of all, where all this occurs. To go from 7 dihydrocholesterol, <clears throat> to cholecalciferol, that happens in the skin, okay? To go from, from here, cholecalciferol to the, um, to the 25-OH, that's gonna happen in the liver. And then the last step happens in the kidneys. And why that's important is because there's questions out there that if you have kidney dysfunction, why is your, you know, you have to understand your, your calcium levels can be lower uh, and the vitamin D levels low due to kidney issues, also due to liver issues. Yeah, um, or if you're lacking absorption, which is, you know, which could be, uh, you know, you got dark skin pigment or you're, you're somewhere up north, okay? So here's the pathway. 7, cholecalciferol, 25, 1, and 24. Skin, liver, kidney, okay? The only other thing that you're going to have to kind of know is, well, there's two, two little things. It are the enzymes, of course. They could, they could ask you on these. But for the most part, if you know the pathway, you just take whatever is ahead of it and then go that half step back. So the enzyme that goes from here to here is going to be the 25-hydroxylase. Okay, 25-hydroxylase. And then for both of these, it's just the 1-alpha-hydroxylase or the 24-alpha-hydroxylase hydroxylase. All right, so that's pretty easy. So if you know the main pathway, you just take that, those numbers, take a step back, and they're both hydroxylation, okay? That's kind of important. Those are hydroxylation. Now this very first step, which is the one in the skin, and back to this question. I know, I know that's a lot. I know that's, you're like, holy crap, I didn't watch this video to just to, to go over pathways. Yes, but it's, it's simpler than it looks. Now, back to this question. This patient's been in the hospital 200 days. Their vitamin D levels are low, or I'm sorry, uh, they're, they're low, and we, they have to give you a reference range. Now on the test, you know, on your step one, there's a lab button at the top right. Just figure out, go click up there, and if you don't have it memorized, just look where the vitamin D is, okay? So it's low, and they want to get you some sunlight exposure in the atrium area. Which of these steps says the skin and sunlight? And it's going to be right here, okay? So. What's interesting is we know it's not 24 hydroxylase because 24, boom, right here, that's the enzyme. One alpha, well, we knew that guy was right here in the kidney as well, not so much. 25 hydroxylase was right there in the liver, not him, so those guys are off the table. So now I'm left with this 7D, 
dehydrocholesterol. Now, was it hydroxylation or isomerization? You're like, oh my gosh, if they ask me this on the step, I'm, you know, this, this isn't fair. But here's the deal. Remember how I said hydroxylation were both these two, right? This one's going to be isomerization, okay? I, if you know it this way, I don't care how they ask you any questions on the vitamin D, you're going to get them right, okay? Um, you just got to know the pathway, where it's located, and then the enzymes. All right, this one says, a 35-year-old male with stage 3 kidney disease has low serum calcium levels. Upon further review of lab work, there appears to be an increased serum uh, PTH. Based on this information, which of the following is most likely impaired? All right, now, we even, remember what we said. Now, this is a much better drawing, right? Where, where's the location for this? We said here is going to be the skin. This is going to be the liver. And, of course, here, oops, it's going to be the kidney. Now, what type of, what type of um, reactions were these? Well, this was an isomerization. This was a hydroxylation. And this one was a hydroxylation reaction. Well, how do I know the enzymes? Well, we take all we do is we take that number and go backwards. 25 hydroxylase, 24 hydroxylase, 1 alpha hydroxylase. So now we have everything, okay? We have everything there is to know about vitamin D when it comes to this. Now, over here, just, just as a side note, this guy is the active. This guy is inactive. And this whole pathway here is protective. Okay, it's protective for the body, meaning that, that say you have too much vitamin D, for whatever reason, uh, that the body will start to shift it down this pathway and use the 24 hydroxylase to make it less, you know, it, you know vitamin D, it's, it's really, actually vitamin D is more of a hormone, um, but it, it can build up to toxic levels. So the body protects itself and shifts it. If you have too much, it'll shift it this way and make it an inactive form, okay? So this pathway is protective. This pathway is the active, and that's the one that kind of floats around, the 1-25. One, the one this one here is the one we measure, okay? It's the one that we measure. It's the one that's, uh, I guess you could say, it's, it sticks around the most, and so that's the one when you put in the lab work, you'll always put in for the 25-OH, not this one, okay? Now, back to this question. 35-year-old male, stage 3 kidney disease, has low serum calcium. Okay, so calcium is down. Upon further review of lab work, there appears to be an increased PTH. Okay, now we're getting a little bit on the endocrine system here. Uh, based on this information, which, which is most likely impaired? Well, we know it was the kidney, so we know we're at this stage. So then it becomes, well, was it, was it this pathway where it was the active using 1-alpha hydroxylase, or was it this pathway, which is the inactive, using 24? Well, the fact is that if this one was impaired and this one was still working, our calcium would be, would, be, would be normal and our PTH would be normal. But the fact is they're telling me calcium is low. Okay, fine, but I can't really differentiate so much. But when they tell me the PTH is increased, that's telling me that we're not getting good active calcium in our system. So it sends a signal to the brain saying, hey man, I need more PTH, more PTH. Um, and so therefore, we know that the correct answer is going to be C. Now, if they said something up here that the person had, the person had uh, liver issues, I'd be jumping all over this one. If the person says there's malabsorption of some type, or again, they're up in the, the elevated uh, latitudes, or dark skin pigmentation, I'm going with this one. All right? Now, this one says, a 34-year-old female presents to her primary care concern that she is getting too much vitamin D from the sun in her diet. The, ah, uh, geez. The physician informs her that her body has a way to protect from excess vitamin D. Which of the following enzymes is matched correctly with the pathway associated with protection from excess vitamin D? Well, you already know where I'm going with this, right? You're gonna be going, excess is gonna be right here. But now, what enzyme was that? Well, if we know all these guys, we know that we take the first number, take a step backwards, 24 alpha, hydroxylase, which we know this is a hydroxylation reaction, and it's going to be on the pathway uh, D. Okay? So it's going to be right there. 
If it was this one, it, this is our active. You know, this is the active form of vitamin D. This, is, uh, this occurs in the kidney. This is our protective one. This one occurs in the liver. It's also a hydroxylation. We know the active enzyme for this is 25 hydroxylase. This one occurs, is in the skin. Uh, and we know it's an isomerization. All right. So guys, really for this vitamin D, they, this is, it's, you know, I've seen these questions before, but you just gotta know the basic pathways. 7 d hydrocholesterol goes to cholecalciferol, 25, and then one and 24. Walk it backwards for your enzymes, know the locations, and then if you really wanna go to the next level, know that these two are hydroxylation, this one's isomerization. I hope this helps, guys.